welcome to Artful Insights. I'm Shane Farrell, the Digital Projects and Programs Manager for Arts Philadelphia, and together you and I are going to look at some art today. This video is produced in partnership between Dementia Society of America and Arts Philadelphia. Each month we offer a live program where a small group of people talk about a work of art or works of art from museums and cultural centers around the country. Uh, it's a different museum or cultural center each month. And in addition to that live program, we also produce a video like the one you're watching right now. We look at the same works of art as we did in the live group, but with the video, it's 30 to 40 minutes in length. You can watch it any time, day or night, that might suit you. And it's an opportunity to have a more intimate, self-driven conversation about the art. I'll ask a few questions to get us started, give you a few things to think about. I'll share some of the observations and thoughts that folks from the live group brought up that I think might be interesting for you to consider. But really, this video each month is about you. It's about what you see in these works of art, how you respond to them, and just having the opportunity to look at a work of art and think about it at your own pace. If you're watching this video with someone, please feel free to pause from time to time if you'd like so that you can have your own conversation. If you're watching on your own, we're delighted to have you, and it'll be a conversation just between the two of us. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to the museum or cultural center that we're visiting today. Welcome to Artful Insights. So here we are at the museum that we're going to be visiting today. This is the Nasher Museum in Durham, North Carolina. The Nasher is a part of Duke University. It was initially called the Duke Museum of Art and was founded in 1969 with a collection of 200 medieval works. But the museum as it is today was founded in 2005. It was named for Raymond Nasher, who is a Duke alum, an art collector, and a benefactor of the museum. Their collection primarily focuses on contemporary art, and they give particular detail to those that have been underrepresented historically in the arts, with a particular focus on artists of African descent. But there's lots of other things in the collection here. There is a strong collection of European medieval art, European and American paintings, outsider art, classical antiques, African art, and ancient American art. Only a small portion of the collection is on view at any one time, but if you go to the Nasher's website, you can look at a digital database of over 6,000 objects. So there's lots of art you can see just from the comfort of your own home. The Nasher Museum is free to the public, so if you are ever in Durham, North Carolina, you can give them a visit and see a lot of great contemporary art for free. There's lots of programs that are held at the Nasher, including arts events, lectures, and gallery talks. And as a part of a research university, Duke University, they've become kind of a center for interdisciplinary studies. So now that you've seen the museum that we're visiting and learned a little bit about it, let's go ahead and take a look at the artwork that we're going to be looking at today. So here's the work of art that we're going to be taking a look at today. Before I say anything about it, I want you to just take a look and see what you notice. What are some of the first things about this work of art that jump out at you. And after you notice those first things that really capture your attention, what other things do you start to notice as you keep looking? What are some of the more subtle things that don't jump out at you right away? So I'm just going to let you take some time to look over this piece. 
see what you see, notice what you notice, let your eye move around, and when we come back, we'll have a discussion about this work of art. So now that you've had a chance to look this over and notice some things about this piece of art, I'd be very curious to hear what some of the first things you noticed were. What were your first impressions of this piece? Well, one of our participants in the live program said, I've never been to Mardi Gras, but that's what it reminds me of. And another participant said, it's a joyful celebration. I wonder if you got that same sense from this piece. When you looked at this, did you think this might be some sort of big celebration, something like Mardi Gras, perhaps? Does the mood seem to be joyful to you or would you use another word to describe it? As we continued to look at the piece, we started talking about color. And I'd be curious to hear what you noticed about the colors in this piece. Were there certain specific colors that you were drawn to? Were there some that jumped out at you first and then others that you started noticing later? What are some of the things we notice about the way color is used in this piece? Well, one of our participants in the live program said the thing she noticed was the prominence of blues and greens swirling throughout the art. And if we look around, there are a lot of blues and greens. We can see blue tones in the shirts and this hat of the musicians. We can see greens in the outfits of the dancers here. There's lots of blue and green moving throughout the piece. Are there blues and greens you notice that are different than the ones that I've pointed out? And I would also want to ask you, this participant described the color as swirling throughout the piece. How would you describe the way that you move throughout the piece? Would you describe it as swirling? Maybe you would say something like floating or bouncing? Is there a particular way that your eye moves around this? And does color help your eye move in a certain direction or speed through the piece? What do you think about that, about the sense of movement in this piece? Would you say you move throughout this very fast? Or does your eye move slowly from thing to thing in this painting? It seems that the artist really did create a sense of motion and movement in this piece with all the different angles and action that's going on. And that's something that's interesting to think about with any work of art. How does the artist guide our eye through it? And when we're looking around the piece, 
how are we doing that? Are we doing that quickly? Are we bouncing from item to item? Or are we moving slowly and contemplatively as we look at the piece? I'd be curious to hear what your reflection is of how you move throughout this piece. But let's get back to talking about color. What are some things you notice about color? We talked about the blues and the greens, but there's a lot more going on than just that. What do you notice? Well, one of our participants in the live program said, the colors are magnificent. They're just beautiful. Another participant tended to agree with them. They said there are pinky orange colors in the skin of these dancers. There are light and dark blues. There's gold in the instruments. And it feels very vibrant and alive. Would you agree with that? Do you think that the colors in this painting feel very vibrant and alive? Or do they feel more dull and quiet to you? What kind of emotion is created by the color here? As we continued looking at color in this piece, someone said there are lots of different skin tones and shades in this piece. And let's take a little bit of a closer look at this and zoom in a little. So as we look at some of the different skin tones in this piece, what are some of the colors that we notice? For example, we can see that the skin tone of these two figures here are painted very differently with a different set of colors. In this figure here by the piano, we can see some pink colors, some white, some darker reds, and in this figure here, we can see some darker colors, some light blues, maybe some kind of purpley colors down here. Are there specific colors that you're noticing in either of these figures or in any of the figures around the painting? There's really a lot of detail that this artist seems to put into representing these different skin tones. If we move to another part of the painting, we can find even more colors in the skin tones. What are some of the colors you notice here in the skin tones of all these figures? And what differences do you notice between different figures in the painting and the way color is used to create their skin tone? I'd be very curious to hear what your observations are about the way this artist has used color to depict a broad range of different people in this painting. So as we zoom back out, let's talk just a little bit more about color. One thing one of our participants said was she saw the gold first. Is that the color that you noticed first, the kind of golden color in the different instruments here? Or was there something else that was the first thing that you noticed? What jumps out at you right away? As this participant continued, she said that the gold color caused her to make a circle around all the instruments and then move upward to these girls here. So now we're talking about motion again. Motion seemed to come up a lot in the discussion we were having about this piece. This participant saw herself moving in a kind of circular fashion around the instruments and then being pointed upward to the dancers. Are there certain things in this painting that cause you to move from one place to another with the way you're looking at it? Or do you kind of stay in one place when you look at this piece? I'd be curious how you move around the piece and how color 
affects that movement. Question we sometimes like to ask when we look at paintings that are scenes of people somewhere is, is this the kind of place you would like to be? I'm curious what you think. Is this the kind of place you would like to spend some time? One of our participants said, I would like to be there. I want to hear the music and it looks extremely inviting. Do you think you would be interested in hearing the music that's being played in this painting? And is it the kind of place you might like to spend some time? Which actually brings up another question, which is, what kind of place even is this? One of our participants noticed that in the very back of the painting, back here, and let me zoom in a little bit so we can see it a bit more clearly. In the very back of the painting, over here, and over here, and a few other places, all the way back here, she noticed that there were tables with lamps on them, and little glasses as well. So she thought that this might be a nightclub. This might be somewhere people go out and have some drinks. We can see kind of a martini glass right here and some sort of bottle of something right here. Place where people go out, have some drinks, watch some live music. She thought that the lamps were very nice and made a kind of cozy, nostalgic atmosphere. So perhaps this is a painting of a nightclub. Would you agree with that? Does this look like a nightclub to you? And does it look like somewhere you've ever been before? Well, as we talked about place and we talked about where this might be, we of course had to turn to the subject of music. So one of the questions we asked ourselves is, what kind of music do we imagine is being played here? What kind of music do you think they might be playing? Well, all of our participants seem to think that these musicians were playing jazz music. Do you think you would agree with that? Do you think this looks like they're playing jazz and maybe they're in a jazz club somewhere? Or do you think they might be playing a different style of music entirely? I'd be curious to hear what your thoughts are. Well, as we were talking about jazz clubs, our participants started talking about playing music, and some of them had played music. We had someone in our group who had played the clarinet. Uh, we had someone in our group who had played the violin and guitar, and we had someone in our group who had played the trombone and the upright bass. Do you have any experience with playing an instrument? Is there something in here that you can relate to? Well, our participant who played the trombone and the upright bass was reminded of a story when he looked at this painting. He started off saying, it's a very warm and welcoming picture. It's so much fun. My wife and I love jazz, and I played a lot of jazz when I was in college. And seeing stuff like this brings back wonderful memories of some wonderful music that I really enjoyed. When he was younger, he had gone to see Maynard Ferguson's band play at a jazz club called Birdland. And there was a band also playing uh, called the Harry Edison Quintet. And apparently the bass player got stuck in traffic. He was going to be late. So the Harry Edison Quintet was on stage and they said, 
Does anyone in the audience play the upright bass? Our participants said his hand shot up so fast, he almost dislocated it, and they invited him up to play the bass with them. He played an entire set with the band, and he said this is one of the few memories that he really holds on to and can recall any time he's reminded of it. Uh, it was clearly such a strong and cherished memory for him being in this jazz club and getting the opportunity to play with this great band. At the end of the set, they said he did a great job because it was jazz. It, it was all improvised. They weren't reading sheet music, and apparently he did a very good job of keeping up. It's very fun sometimes to think of the things that artworks can remind us of. They can take us right back to a certain experience we've had in our lives. And the group was so grateful to hear this amazing story that our participants shared about playing in a jazz club. I wonder if any of you have had an experience like this or just something that this painting might remind you of. And that led one of our participants to say something interesting. They said the way the faces are highlighted on all the musicians is very dramatic, and it makes them feel like they're on a stage right in front of me, and I can hear the music. Do you feel that way about this work of art? Do you feel like you're right there with these musicians? Or does it feel more at a distance to you? And what are some of the details that make it feel that way? This person talked a lot about the faces of the musicians and how they could see such detail in it and how they could see the effort that the musicians seem to be expending in playing their music. If we look at the saxophonist here, we can see his cheeks are sort of inflated as if he's blowing very hard into his instrument. And we can see something similar with the trumpet player here. So all those small details and attention to the action of the scene really made this person feel like they were right there in the painting. As we were talking about all these details that we were noticing about the musicians and feeling like we were right there with them, we started to also ask what we might hear in this painting. Is there something that you hear when you look at this? Is there a specific rhythm that comes to mind or a specific melody, maybe even a specific song that you think of? And are there other sounds that you hear, sounds from the crowd or just ambient noise of some sort in the nightclub? What are sounds that come to mind when we look at this? One of our participants said, Next time you show this, you ought to have this backed by some beautiful jazz music. And that seems like a really fun idea, to actually play some music and see how that affects the way that we look at this work of art. What sort of music do you imagine would be playing here? We talked about this a little bit earlier, but Maybe there's a specific song or a specific band that you think of when you look at this painting. If you look in the description right below this video, you should see a little section of text right below me if you uh, are not in full screen mode. We're going to put a little playlist there of some jazz music that might be nice to listen to while you're looking at this painting. So if you click on that link, 
right in that description below me. It will take you to some music that you can listen to while you take a look at this work of art and see how it changes how you look at the painting. So I hope you had a chance to turn on some music and take a look at this piece with music in the background. And I would love to hear how that changed the way you looked at it, or maybe it enhanced the way you were looking at it in some way. Now that we've done that, I want to ask kind of one final question, and this is a question we ask a lot about different artworks that we look at. And that's, what would you call this painting? If you had to come up with a title for this painting, what would you come up with? Do you have something in mind? I would love to hear what your title was. One of our participants said, I would call it Ecstasy. I think that's a great title for this. It's capturing a sort of overwhelming sense of joy and emotion. Ecstasy. What would you call it? Well, the painter that made this work of art was named Archibald Motley, and he titled it Hot Rhythm. It's oil on canvas, and it was painted in 1961. Motley was 70 years old when he painted this, and something he loved to do was depict subjects from the jazz age. He commonly walked the streets of Bronzeville, which is a neighborhood in Chicago's south side, and he would gather characters from around there, from clubs and cabarets and street festivals, all sorts of different parts of music culture for his paintings. So this is perhaps a kind of scene that you may have seen at one point in Bronzeville during a certain era. Perhaps you could walk into a club like this and hear some jazz music. So now that you know a little bit about the painting and the artist, I'm just curious if that changes your perception of this piece at all. Uh, sometimes when we get a little bit of context about a piece, it can change the way we look at it a little bit. Is there anything that's changed for you after you learned a little bit about the artist? We're coming to the end of our discussion here. I hope you've enjoyed looking at this painting. I hope you got a chance to put on some fun music while you were looking at it. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to look at some artwork with me. I want to thank the Dementia Society of America for supporting Artful Insights. And I want to thank Elizabeth Peters from the Nasher Museum who helped us put this together. Uh, we're very thankful that you gave us a chance to take a look at some great artwork from your collection, like this painting that we're looking at today. So thanks so much to you for spending this time with me. Thanks so much to everyone who made this program happen. And before we go, I just want to encourage you to go to artsphilly.org, take a look at our events calendar. And if this was something that was fun for you, try signing up for one of our programs. This program is called Artful Insights, and we go to museums all around the country, but there are lots of other programs as well, most of which take place online at the current moment, and I'd love to see you join in on one of them and come have a discussion with a whole group of people. Thanks again for joining us for Artful Insights. I'm Shane Farrell, the Digital Projects and Programs Manager for Arts Philadelphia, and I hope you've had a nice time looking at some art with me. Music